Okay, um, well, I expect the majority of people in the audience are, are already familiar with what Risk OSM does now. Um, it's the open street map uh, mapping software for Risk OS. Um, I am, however, going to start with a very quick plug for a different product, uh, which so far no one has bought other than it coming free with in, in, impact. Um, so as I announced the other day, we've got um, a new version of Imp Email. Imp Email was designed for use with Impact and also with Powerbase using uh, the Impulse protocol, a venerable thing that Computer Concepts invented some time ago. And um, this, uh, basically the Impact uh, database um, does its reporting output via Impression and Ovation Pro using uh, Impulse. And a few years ago, I realized, well, hang on, people might need to send out emails rather than send out paper documents. So we need something equivalent for doing emails. And so that's what email was about. Uh, but then I realized that it would be useful uh, for people who don't have impact or power base to be able to use this software. Um, so we now have a version which supports CSV files. So what this um, is probably easiest to explain what this does by doing a demo. Um, so um, here is an email template in imp email. So you create a template which has your from and to addresses and subject and everything. It supports attachments as well. And within that template, there are placeholders which allow fields to be inserted from the CSV file. Um, and um, the, the demonstration I have here, we just drop the CSV file onto the template. Um, if the headings at the top of the CSV file match the uh, placeholders, then it will uh, work out which one's which. Uh, but you can change them around if you want to and create a new placeholder um, if it's a new CSV file and a new template that you're generating. So just to give you an example, this here is a, um, actually I might be able to increase the font size. There we are. Right, how about that? Um, so this is, uh, this is an email uh, from Bilbo Baggins to all of the dwarves um, to invite them on two separate days because he doesn't want to be inundated. Um, and so he's um, addressing them by name. He's got their individual email addresses uh, being inserted. He's going to tell them what date to arrive and what food to bring. So uh, if I just um, test this, it will test with the, uh, the first record there. That's what the uh, email will look like. Um, and you can flip through and um, uh, try the others um, and uh, make sure that it's all working okay. Of course, there's no particular reason why it couldn't be working okay, but sometimes if you're sending out bulk messages, it's just a bit more reassuring to be able to see that it's not going not to be spamming loads of people that you didn't mean to contact. Um, so you can also... Um, uh, have a selection of rows um, and just send to a selected number of people, or you can send it to all of the people on this list. And the um, software has some nice features borrowed from Impact, um, where if you realise you've made a typo, and why didn't I, why didn't I make a typo on purpose so I could demonstrate that? That would have been better, wouldn't it? Um, suppose I actually realised I didn't want to ask him to bring Volavon. Uh, we, we'll, we'll get him to bring some quiche as well. I can out-click in that uh, box, and this is not editing the CSV file. It's editing what will go into the the merging process. So if you realise, oh drat, I meant to I meant to alter that. I can't be bothered to go back to the database. It's just it's just a one-off. I just want to fix it for this message. Then we can test again, and you'll see. Uh, that we've got uh, quiche as well. Um, so, uh, obvious sorts of applications, you could use this for sending to members of a society, reminding them when their subscriptions are due and how much they're going to be. You could include their addresses and say, could you check your contact <laughs> details, please, and, and all that kind of thing. Um, and you can uh, do this basically with any application that supports CSV export, which is pretty much any spreadsheet or database software. So that's just a quick plug for that. If you're interested, uh, come and see me on the stand, and um, you might be the first customer for that one. <laughs> right, back to um, Risk OSM. And actually, one of the things we can tell you about Risk OSM is it now supports loading CSV files. Now I wonder 
whether there was any common bit of programming work that went on there. Because, funnily enough, uh, we have a window that looks very similar. <laughs> um, so, uh, we've had the ability to import uh, location information based on GPX files, standard file, file format for uh, global positioning system um, devices. But people also have place information such as press codes from addresses, uh, maybe national grid references, latitude and longitude. This is a list of uh, plaques that have been put up around Beeston, which is where I was brought up, um, to uh, commemorate notable people. So I'm going to import these as pins onto the map. I'm going to take the pin name from the um, person who's been commemorated. I'm going to turn off the postcode because actually I think the grid references are more accurate for um, pulling the information in. And we'll add the house number and the street name to the description field in the pin. Now, both of those things are going in. They will both be added to the description field. Um, and in fact, you can drag the columns into different order if you actually want this column to appear first in the description field followed by that one, then that's what you do. I don't want to on this occasion. Um, and you'll see there's various other ways of getting information, latitude and longitude, separate eastings and northings for the grid reference in two parts. Uh, all of those can be imported and various other fields can be imported into, such as the comment field, the elevation, uh, file names as well, um, and URLs. Uh, so, um, and again, we can do the editing, so um, we can now click and say, um, I can't do anything to say, there you go, we just uh, alter that slightly. So then we click on import, again, we can make a selection or just import all of them. And it can import these as pins, which are points on the map, or if you've got a CSV file which contains points on the route, then it can import a route and create a route from it. And in fact, one of the fields can be the, the track name. Um, if the track name changes, then it will start a new track. So you can actually import several tracks in one go from a CSV file. So this makes the software a lot more versatile. So it's pulling the information in, drawing the map, and uh, we'll place the um, plaques on the map. So now you know where you can go in Beeston to see these uh, things that have been commemorated. And we can open the pins and tracks window uh, and see more detail. As you'll uh, note, uh, Beeston Village Cross has that extra bit of garbage on the end that I just typed before importing. Um, and uh, there we are. So this, this gives another way to get data into the maps and um, overlaid on top. We have also added the ability to export in CSV file format as well. Um, so um, from here I can, uh, I think, um, export, uh, sorry, export CSV. Um, and that's interesting, yeah. Um, it's showing here all the fields that are available, some of which don't have any data in, but there could be things that have data in. Um, so I can actually um, export latitude and longitude. Suppose I don't want the grid reference. Um, here we go. Oh, let's have something that can display it. And there we are uh, in Zap. So I started out with something that had OS grid references in it. I've now got a very similar file, but with latitude and longitude in instead. So you can, in fact, use this for batch conversion from one format to another. And you don't even have to draw the map. Um, you can just import into the pins and tracks area and then export again. So um, yeah, that's that one. Right. Oh, by the way, within Pmail, I meant to say the attachments don't have to be the same for every person who's receiving the email, because the attachment name, the file name, can be one of the things you put in the CSV file. And so you can attach different files to different people. Yeah, anyway, back to our script. Um, right, now uh, we've got a um, features window, um, which 
we brought in in uh, October. It sort of doubles up as a key to the map and part way towards having a style editor. It's not a full style editor, it doesn't allow you to choose colours uh, or anything like that, but it does allow us to turn off things. So if we want to, um, suppose I zoom in a bit on the centre of Beeston, um, suppose we want to um, turn off um, details of, um, I don't know, uh, certain kinds of shops. We don't want any of the shops, say. Uh, we'll select, oops, uh, yeah. select all shops, and I can put a cross there, and you'll see very shortly after I update map that all of the pink things, all those different shops will disappear from the map. So, okay, you could have done that in draw rather, for that, rather fit, in a fiddly way before, uh, but that was a lot of work. The other advantage of suppressing the things you're not interested in is that sometimes other features you are interested in were being crowded out of the map, and so they will then appear. Um, so that um, allows you um, to control what's displayed on the map. You can also now export as a draw file this whole um, features window, uh, which will basically show you, it can act as a key. And so if you were wanting to distribute a map to other people, you might want to include a key, and now you can do that by combining it in draw in whatever way you choose. Um, so, highlight on the map. Uh, oh, yes. Um, we. Oh, yeah, uh, and also if you don't know where the library is, but you think, oh, there's a library here somewhere, I can't see it on the map, um, then you can. Highlight selected features on map, and it will then show it in uh, with the yellow outlining there. So that can be quite handy if you think, oh, I didn't know there was a, where could that be? Um, right, next thing I wanted to demonstrate, which I'm afraid I won't be able to demonstrate very well, I'll just have to talk about, um, is uh, the nominative application. This can be accessed from um, uh, this goes M's new map window by this little button here. We introduced this in October. Um, you've always had a gazetteer from the very start uh, where you typed in place names and it would come up with the places to choose from. Uh, but the nominating service is an online one, uh, hence, as we've not got the network working, I can't demonstrate it. But you can type in a street name and name of the town and click on this button here and it will find it. Um, you can also do things like typing in um, food in Richmond, Yorkshire, and it will then return you restaurants and uh, you know um, takeaways, that kind of thing. Um, these pop up in a nice window, and you can fetch more results and fetch more results, and then display them all on the map. The other thing about Nominatin, if you've not bought this GSM. Nominatin does actually allow you to get away without having Risk OSM. Uh, this latest version, um, as I say, I can't demonstrate it, I'm afraid. Um, but it also now supports loading maps in Map View, which is uh, Thomas Millius's free um, piece of software <coughs> for viewing uh, tiled format maps um, over the internet. So Map View uh, will pull down tiles uh, from OpenStreetMap. Um, as I think as PNGs and they've been converted to sprites and rendered on the screen. So um, that's an alternative to using RISC OSM and um, Nominatim uh, supports loading um, into that. Nominatim is also used from uh, Organizer. If you're looking up an address from Organizer, if there's a postcode, it will send it direct to RISC OSM. If there's no postcode, um, then it will send it to Nominatim, which attempts to look it up. So from there, you'd be able to load them into that view alternatively instead of risk OSM. Right, next feature, um, not new to, this, uh, new to this show, but it was introduced in October, find web photos. Again, I can't demonstrate this, <laughs> but it's a nice one. Uh, you can uh, basically go and fetch photographs from uh, a site called Geograph, and it will put pins on the map and you can then view the pictures um, which other people have uploaded to that site. Right, okay. Um, 
another little feature that I quite like, which you may not be aware of, um, among the export options, there is an option to export an OpenStreetMap org URL. So if you're looking at the map and you want to share it with your non-RISCOS using friends, uh, you can go over here and choose uh, different sorts of format of URL, um, centered on the current center point or centered on the point under the mouse, uh, choose whether to have a marker or not, and choose what style of map to have. And it'll then give you a uh, URL which you can then send to people in an email and you know, say, let's meet here, and there's, there's a URL uh, to the um, map. So that's quite nice for sharing things uh, with other sharing maps with other people. Right. Next one, um, the Spotlight tool has had an overhaul. This used to be at the bottom of the window there and allowed you to search for uh, names and places uh, within the map that's being displayed. Um, it also now has an option to select option, uh, objects that have web links. So if I click this, you'll see a whole load of things on this uh, map where uh, there is additional information if we control click to open. Uh, so that's, uh, of course, sorry, can't demonstrate that, but anyway, you can see it's attempting to open the web page for uh, the primary school I went to. <laughs> um, I've not looked at that. <laughs> Didn't have a website when I was there. Um, anyway, um, so that's one of the things you can do with the, um, with the highlight tool. Um, where's the highlight tool gone? There we are, down here. Um, you can also now add pins to the map, so if you search for a particular thing, you can now add pins. You can also export stuff from the map. So we can export these objects as CSV files. Um, and here we get quite a lot more data, because as well as um, things like the latitude and longitude, um, RISCO then will calculate stuff like the length or the perimeter, the area of uh, sites, and you get direct access to um, the, the different tags uh, that are um, in, the, um, in the data behind the scenes. So that's a totally random selection of things, but never mind, we'll just see what it looks like. So um, you'll see there's the area in hectares or square meters or whatever, there's a coffee shop. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously that wasn't a very useful selection of fields, but it shows what a rich, um, amount of stuff you can export. If I'd exported the URLs, that would be useful. We could have reused them somewhere. OK. Uh, now, the other one I was going to demonstrate, I, did, I mentioned loading CSV. Um, this one is fun. Um, there is a website which I would have demonstrated. Uh, uh, this, is, this is turning out really well, isn't it? Um, which um, allows you to get hold of the information about where all of the buses currently are in Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> now, so you can, you can get this uh, live. Um, this is not live, this is one we recorded earlier. Um, I'm just wondering why the whole thing seems to have crashed. It may not have crashed, it may just be appallingly slow. Yes. That doesn't look very good, does it? I'll wait a moment or two. Yeah, so, um, I mean, it's amazing how much public data there is now, uh, which you can retrieve in various forms. And, uh, yeah, the Edinburgh buses can be retrieved. Um, if you apply for an API key, you can then obtain the, the current locations of all the buses, all those in the buses fleet. I'm just going to... Um, just start again on that one, I think. I don't know what's gone wrong there. We'll give it one more go. Um, so I'm going to choose... That is actually the bus um, number. So I'm going to put that into the label of the pins. I'll tell you what, we'll just... Um, we'll just import some of them. 
That's looking more promising. Right, okay, and it's going to draw us a map. So this was exported a few days ago, so this is not the current location of the buses. Um, but um, you'll, you'll, you'll see what we get very shortly. Edinburgh is quite detailed, unfortunately. Right, here we are, lots and lots of buses. Um, the great thing is, is if we zoom in on Portobello, uh, we will find there's a big collection of them in, in the bus depot. Uh, <laughs> so if you want a bus, that might be the best place to go. This just shows they don't turn the thing off when the, when the, when the bus is just sitting there. Um, right. Uh, now, more geodata. Uh, we're going to load uh, this, this, this one. Is... Oh, what? This much tag? Oh, my God, oh dear, dear. We always find all the bugs just, <laughs> yeah. just on the, in the show theatre. The 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 <laughs> yeah. Uh, right, that was because I dropped it onto the map, wasn't it? Now, mm, something wrong there. Right, this is, um, I might have shown this before. Um, it's a uh, it's the second day of a four-day bike ride I did a few years ago across the Pennines. A lot of people do it in two or three, actually, but we just decided to have a, a leisurely time of it. Um, and we now have a feature allowing you to animate this kind of track, because very often a GPS device will record the timings because it gets it free of charge from the satellite, you get an exact time, and also the elevation. Um, so we get uh, not only um, the uh, timings but we can also plot a gradient profile. So I'll just set this off and we set off from Penrith. Uh, if you get bored with that, well we can skip a bit, um, we can move up. Now we're climbing up heart side, very steep. Um, now you'll notice that the blob stops when we get to the top. It seems to stop for ages. If I just plot it in elapsed time instead of distance, you'll see we actually stayed in the cafe for about an hour at the top. It, it was raining outside. We were waiting for it to clear. And then um, when, we, um, when we got some, well, I'll just skip on a bit. Um, shortly afterwards, you'll then see uh, how fast our descent was compared with uh, going up. And uh, off we go. Whee! Oh, that was a good bit. Unfortunately, we had to stop partway down because one of our parties got left behind. <laughs> anyway, so um, you can export these um, as uh, draw files as well. Um, so um, you can then share those with people. And that is a very interesting um, thing because that is that's not part of that track at all. Oh, good grief, there's another bug. Right. Do <laughs> it, um, <laughs> mate. Let me just let me just don't jot these down. Wait a minute. What was the first one? Um, uh, is anyone videoing this? Because if they are, I'll watch the video and I'll see what the bugs are, won't I? Um, and um, the draw file had Devonshire Avenue in it, which is nowhere near the Pennines. Ah dear. Right. Okay. Um, Right. The other main uh, change is we have a better support for RISC-OS 4 and 6 because RISC-OS can now load most of the map data into dynamic areas. Um, I guess that's probably useful if you're running virtual ACON. If you're running a RISC PC, it's useful, but I would recommend doing a smaller area, otherwise you'll be sitting there for a long time. Uh, we have tried it on the RISC PC. It's not unbearable, and really, to be honest, you know, the RISC PC with a strong arm is it's quite it's pretty good still, uh, you know, it's, uh, they're not that unusable. Um, the other thing we have made some progress on, but it's not yet finished, um, we have some limited support for um, Unicode. Um, so if we go to um, Athens, um, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, I think, that would probably be helpful. Um, you'll find that when we hover over features, some of them will have Greek there at the bottom, um, so you can see uh, Agion, uh, 
can't read the second one here, unless it's just too small. Uh, <laughs> um, and um, that, that's present uh, in, the, in, the win in the info at the bottom, uh, and also um, the, um, the pop-up window here. So you'll see you've got some, some Greek uh, in the uh, names, and if we control click on that one, to open in uh, Wikipedia, it would show Greek Wikipedia, except I can't demonstrate that because the network bit didn't work. Oh dear. Never mind. It worked last time and the time before, so, you know.